Welcome to the CBC Podcast. This is, of course, our main show for the week, and I am your host, Armin. As always, you guys can find the CBC at Comic Book Cast, or just, you know what, go Google us. <laughs> I remember it, it, it works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just Google Comic Book Cast, and also you can find me at Arminis on Twitter. And, of course, I'm here with Joe. Going on, you can find me on Twitter at Halftime Joe or any type of social media, just ha- Halftime Joe. Uh, Mitch, help me choose that name one time. I going. gave him the name. Is that stupid? The correct well, thing. tomato, tomato. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> potato, potato. So we're also here with Mitch. What's up? You can find me only on Twitter at Mitch Six Nine Two. Oh, you're too good for all the other social medias. I, I'm a social snob. Oh. I'm only on it. <laughs> Damn, a social snob, I guess. And of course, we got Tristan here. Hey guys, you can catch me at Is J Chance. Because apparently J Chance has been taken for like five years and Lol. they haven't posted anything. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. I say uh, Joe can relate to that all too well. Oh, that's so dumb. I hate that. Eh, I'm kind. I'm kind of low key glad somebody took my name because I actually didn't want like my actual name as my username. I, I was always a fan of when people either had just a random like one word name or kind of something and then their name, their first name. You know what I'm saying? Like at time just uh, I, I kind of like stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, huh? I mean, it makes sense. The Twitter names are all the rage these days. But, like people know other people by like their online names now. I'm just like, oh man, it's a thing. Listen, man, I made a I made a Twitter in like 2008, 2009. Remember one time? I just, I wish I remembered it because I would love to say started in 2008, 2009. I just don't remember the <laughs> my, password. My, the email. I, mine's still my same account from back then. So. I I remember the only reason I started it because a friend of mine said we're on Xbox and it said on the Xbox team that if you make a Twitter and connect it to your Xbox. You could get like a like a free chance at a giveaway, or like let's do it. <laughs> and then, of course, we never really for, we forgot to connect it anyway. So it was like there's no point in it. <laughs> yeah. Old, old, old. Well, I guess now with the intro out of the way, we're going to get into our first topic here, which is going to be about Doctor Strange. So Doctor Strange Two is being teased. Um. Derrickson, the director of the original one, he's the one that's teasing it on his social media, specifically Instagram, since he seems to have walked away for, from Twitter because of everything that's happening. Uh, Doctor Strange 2, we learned, what, a couple of weeks ago that it's definitely happening, so, yep. you know, hype. I mean, <laughs> it, they've certainly been talking about it long enough, and there's no way you throw away that franchise considering how much money the first one made, so. No, nah. I never understood people going like, "Oh, you, you don't need a sequel; you can just have well, it once." So no, like, no, you, or, no, like you, you, you want you want to have that uh, that connection to the supernatural side in the uh, in the MCU because there's a lot more stories you can just, you can tell. So there's a ton of stuff you can drag out through Doctor Strange. But if the that the quantum realm is going to be big, why would you not keep Strange around? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Well, not just that, since, like, he has all these other realms, and, like, we've seen how good his powers are. Like, for example, in Infinity War, and even, you know, Thor Ragnarok, for the little we see him, we see how much he's learned. It's like, can you imagine how nuts the next movie's going to be? Like, oh, man, there's so many possibilities, and you left so many loose ends. Like, what, are you just going to throw yeah. Mordo away? Like, not, don't deal nah, with this? Is he going to be nah. the next so, Red what, Skull? When do we think it's coming out? They're filming in September. Whoa. I I don't know if it's going to be filming in September. Oh, you think production is just starting? Yeah, yeah like okay. maybe he's just working on the script or the. Uh, but I, I assume if you do like a post like that, it has to be I mean, filming, but it doesn't probably, always have to. It just probably. feels like a shit, like, you know. Yeah. I, I but, feel like they're probably entering pre-production, which yeah. I'm assuming they're going to start probably mid next year. Would be my guess, <laughs> yeah. you know, like. This is what I've always said I, for the longest time is that even now more than ever, social media has lifted up that curtain even more now where you have directors just tweeting out saying that they're going to start pre-production. Mm-hmm. It's like not filming, not post-production, pre-production. Even people who just tweet out like, yeah, I got an idea for a script. I'm writing yeah. it right now for them. Not even like pitched it yet. It's just one of those things. The curtain has been lifted up and it's a good and bad thing because – if people expect more when they shouldn't because the curtains lifted up and it's, it's still early on. But it's kind of fun knowing that you know certain people are working on certain stuff even if it's years away. Mm-hmm. I find it's different with films though. Like if you compare films to like let's say for example video games, right? You notice how we know everything about films like this. Like the directors talk about it, the actors are like, "Oh yeah, this is going to happen," and then we know the entire process. Whereas to like video game processes, they're like. 
we might be working on a new Fallout. And then they're just quiet and teasing. Yeah. It's like, the industry is so different. And what I like about, like, Doctor Strange, and specifically Derrickson, you know, when he's been talking about it, he's been very open about the fact that we're definitely going to see, like, Nightmare Realm in some way, shape, or form. And he wants to go more horror route and things like that. And I'm like, I, I feel that this is going to be one of those 2020 movies that they're teasing, especially if you look at it, they start next year. They usually have that one-year turnaround time from yeah. start to release. So do you think Doctor Strange 2 changes the release frame? Like, it's not going to come out in November like the last one? Or do you think that's the I was going to say, like what's, the, um, what's the date for the movies? There's Black a bunch Black. of dates that are still out there, right, that they announced, like, years ago so, that are just... They won't say anything until well, after... Well, there was more over. recent ones as well. Right. If so, so yeah. that, I got the list change. Um, right here. Uh, in 2020, May 1st, we have an unannounced... July 31st and November 6th. So realistically, he's so probably good, November. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I say that they like that, you know, like Black Panther is obviously going to be the February one, even though they moved it up like forward. Yeah. So uh, if it worked in November, keep it in November. Yeah. Listen, man, we've also been saying this for a while now. I mean, Mitch, I think in the main show, too, I, I swear we talked about like summers year round now. Like just because something worked in November, it could doesn't mean it can't work in February. Just because that's where the date happens to line or the movie happens to line. It's summers year round. It's kind of that weird, that weird thing now where big I movies. Saying, I, I would pull a Sophie Turner and say, "Well, look what Black Panther did in February." It's like you, not every movie could do that in February. I, I, I think of... if I remember correctly, Hunger Games was and that was like 2012, right? One of the first wants to do big in March. And I think Lego Movie was one of the first ones to do big in February. And then it kept going after then. And they're wait now we're just waiting on January. January is the only month left that's still considered the dead month because there's nothing yet that's big there. Like, February through December, there's always something. Always. I get Hellboy in January. That's something. Well, I mean, if you, if that happens big, then that might be the first, <laughs> the first yeah. one. Uh, who knows? You, it's hard to predict uh, audiences a lot nowadays because nobody thought – they would latch on a Black Panther the way they did. I, yeah. I didn't. And look how big it got. So you, you really never know. It just takes one, right? It takes one to start the that rise. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, you say November, September? Could be whenever, really. Especially since they're sa- starting pre-production in September. Say they start filming in May, March, April. They could have it out by June if they wanted. The I next, mean, that, the... realistically yeah and do you guys think they're gonna do the marvel thing because kevin feige said multiple times you know in the future we're looking at more crossovers and team-ups to keep these characters you know in the universe do you think they toss anybody into doctor strange 2 along for the ride even if it's like a subplot or minor thing she's been pitching scarlet witch for the longest time ever since that say, just, one yeah, there's that got... one run that we did on, on the comic show what, what was the one where like yeah, magic was... got destroyed or something it broke in and she helped to fix it well, that was the... Um, her solo run, the, yeah. The, no, that was a Doctor Strange book by Aaron. Oh, her, yeah, okay. her solo run was the uh, Witch's Road. Oh, uh, I thought it was... A... That. Well, that could be a mix, right? Magic is broken and Scarlet Witches came to help. I don't know. I mean, At... like, the Witch's Road fits in with, like, the aesthetic they've made, so... Yeah. I know. I think we all would like that just because we want to see more Elizabeth Olsen in the MCU because she's only really in the team-up movies right now, and Avengers specifically, so it's like, we'd like to see her do more because her character is that good so yeah yeah i agree with that um you know, dr strange dude it's going to be one of these things where even if we know they're starting production and everything we don't know the release date which i just hope that they can you know keep it i guess how do i put this um without sounding like an a-hole uh Keep it more interesting than the first one, because the first one, as much as I love it, it's in like my top ten MCU. It did, it did suffer that whole oh, it's an origin story, and we were like what fifteen movies into the MCU, so naturally yeah. the second one. It was be very more... safe. How, yeah. how does that make you sound like that's the surprise? How does that make you sound like an know, a-hole? That just like you just thought Joe the first one had it. boring aspects. Yeah, it's because like he's complaining. You should have told yeah. me I would have said it. Like I just, <laughs> I, yeah, the first one did have some boring aspects to it. Yeah. I, you like know, the origin I, it story better. always comes off a little boring, if that makes sense. Because like, yeah. it, it's a slower movie, and it's like, it, it, especially it's that it's after Civil sense. War, you're like, oh man, this is a, you know, like, back to basics. Like, well, then when you see, like, when you when you see the movie, right, it's like, at least the first part of it, like, alright, well, here's uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, he's gonna get injured, and he's gonna, it, that first part seems same old, same old, because it is same old, same old, yeah. it is an origin movie, and it's 100% a, a good, not a good, but a 
accurate kind of uh, statement about that. It is an origin, so it is going to feel the same. Um, I I personally thought it would have been better if they leaned more on the Eastern philosophy stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I thought the little bit they teased in the movie was really good, and which like just even that little bit makes it higher for me. But I still that movie is kind of like it could have been better. Like yeah. I mean, Rachel McAdams really did nothing. Like, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Like, well, uh, I love maybe if they used her more, like the comic counterparts, you know, like. Hundred percent. I, I, I hope they, they bring her back. I I hope they do so they can have She'll her be back. utilized more. And I'm pretty sure Derrickson would even call to that of saying like, yeah, I mean, it was an origin story. We only had so much time for this and that. We just had to get them out of the way for you know Infinity War and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. like, the upside with that is like the Russos have already done the character development for him. True. So like you, you were just like training him in the first one. It wasn't really anything. Well, like, now he can do everything. And Taika, maybe like a little bit, right? Because Taika did show off in Ragnarok that he could do a little bit more. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah, yeah, that's true. So like, even think, like over the way, movies, like, he had like development. The, the way the Russo's done it though, where you saw more Doctor Strange stuff, like the well, yeah, he learned more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so like you know, you saw. I think that was them just, like, getting people ready for what the next one is going to be, yeah, you know? Like, yeah. It's like, oh, no, it's been, like, five years since we've seen this dude. Like, he's learned everything there is to learn, to, like, because, you know, he has time. Well, so. not, not quite everything, because once you learn everything, that's when everything stops getting interested. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, well, I guess he'll have to deal with Nightmare in some way, shape, or form, so... <laughs> that yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be Nightmare. Oh, yeah. No, no way guess, about uh, it. We're going to move on to the next subject here at hand which our second topic is going to talk about Superman. And they recently said he's very important to the future of DC movies going forward. Now, I guess. um, So this is what Johns said in an interview. And he said, you know, specifically the exact quotes, like working with Walter and Marta and Toby Emmerich over there, Warner Brothers, they feel the same way. Everyone loves Superman. Everyone knows who Superman is. And that they want him to keep it forward. But it is, you know, one of those things maybe – He's just kind of staying out of the limelight for now, just so mm-hmm. they could keep get the ball rolling again with Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman eighty four, just yeah. three like you know back to back to back, like, uh, like you know three P right there. Here's honestly, I feel that the, the whole DCEU concept of that whole shared universe, I think their biggest mistake was making Batman so old because yeah. they kind of put yeah. a like hamstring on everything because it's like the moment you made Batman old, you aged everything. And like this week we found out there was, you know, dead Dick Grayson. So they were already developing a Nightwing movie. And now you're going to have a new Batman, which they've more or less now confirmed and hasn't been denied. No, it's going to be like after his first year of being Batman. So it's clearly going to be. So it's a, it's like, like a soft reboot. Happening, right. Basically. And, right. I mean, so I say soft, but it actually could be a really hard reboot on that. Like Batman's not yeah. a younger and I, I don't know how, I mean, I guess maybe The Flash is going to have to be that movie, right? That's the only right. way to, to do that. Which, which, that's the whole thing. Like, I think adding such an old Batman kind of ruined Superman to a degree, because I would love to see Cavill, like, continue that and see what he has to offer. But then... I think I, he has the perfect look for Superman, personally. Yeah? But, like... Mm-hmm the same time I say that and I went and watched the new Mission Impossible Fallout oh it's great isn't it so it's such a great movie but Cavill is a little wooden but it works for a secret agent because he's playing a heartless killer so I was like you know this works I, for him but he delivers a couple of those lines very static almost you, you, you say know? wooden I would argue dry humor yeah maybe yeah yeah I don't know he has like you know there's certain moments I thought he worked amazing in a Mission Impossible I thought he was made for this kind of like film and he's funny in his own right and I, I mean maybe you know like we said before James Wan is the best director they've had so maybe they just need a better overall director to kind of up his uh because I feel like Cavill has some kind of talent but he works hard more than the talent he has so like you know whether I, I think if he just keeps working hard and he has a great director beside him kind of giving yeah. him the right direction I think he'll get a perfect Superman I think he really has a look I just think uh, we just have yet to see uh, an amazing uh, movie. So mm-hmm. hopefully that's in the future, whoever it may be. I don't know what director they're going to choose for that. seen so far from Shazam, if they could maybe give it that type of, like... You, you can't make feel? it the same thing, No, though. but I mean, like, like, that that's a straight you know, like, comedy, man. Superman being a little bit more friendly, if that makes sense. Like, because so that, far I haven't that, gotten that's a, that That's from something him, else, I, I think, in my opinion, because... But if you look at Shazam and Aquaman, they they look like 
really two different movies. And I'm sure yeah. they're going to have some sense of, like, they're just really, like, they're going to be, like, you know, like the Marvel movies, right, where overall they're fun, but you would still say there is still some differences in each of the movies. Mm-hmm. And I think overall if the next Superman movie is going to be fun, but it's just still going to be a difference, and it depends on what route they take. Are they going to want to uh, do a smaller film and maybe just be about uh, kind of like him in Metropolis and helping everybody else. And I mean, I know Bendis isn't doing the best run right now with Man of Steel and Superman, but there is something <laughs> to say about like Superman stopping fires. Yeah. That could be something in a movie or if, cause I, I feel like that's the only way to go, right? They already went big with hitting doomsday out of space. I feel like they can't go bigger. I mean, they could take it, I guess. Well, I mean, they can. That's yeah, they like... can, but I, I feel like the only way to kind of, re- get a redemption quote and it's kind of we're saying because i personally love man of steel and bad movie superman it's just to go the other way around right we say this all the time with the fast and furious movies just go the other way around i think the thing with superman it kind of gets to me is it's like so if they go bigger than let's say you know what they did in the first one in doomsday then you're going what brainiac alien invasion i'm like well that requires the justice league at that point so it's like uh, it, it's a weird point because Bra- sometimes superman takes brainiac on his own sometimes justice league does it just it, it's very weird it, it, i guess it just depends on how strong the writer makes brainiac right mm-hmm. brainiac can just be a one like a superman villain or he i mean he is technically but sometimes he becomes a justice league villain uh i i would love to I see more crypton would... stuff like candor the, oh yeah the fortress and all. i would just whoever next up i mean look at what james Ward did with aquaman and sandberg did with shazam they really got the history of it and brought stuff back that people kind of forgot about it in the comics so it's like i would hope they bring stuff like that in the next Superman movie, and see, maybe and we see. learn more about Krypton. See, I would, you know, I like the way they put Krypton in Man of Steel. That's that's just me, though. See, there's a really easy way around you going. Yeah, well, sometimes Brainiac's like Justice League villain. You bring him in Superman, and you set him up for a Justice League movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, mm-hmm. that's so the, like you can uh, you can bring him in there. Superman thinks he beat him, but really he was just uh, saving his energy and just like bigger Brainiac coming. It just, I mean, look, Brainiac's in Krypton right now, and he's like. He's I mean, just fighting Krypton. There's nobody else fighting Brainiac right now. He's to be fair, he's all powerful in that one. So. Yeah, <laughs> they made him like the all powerful one. Sometimes he's a, a little weaker version of it. It just depends on how they write it, I guess. To me personally, I want that Superman story that's on a personal level. Like it doesn't need to be go big or go home. You know, I, I think that's sure. commonly the mistake people want with Superman. But it's like he's a character that technically is hard to write for the people he they've is. hired. But it's like. First, go hire somebody that's written good Superman. Like, get a comic book writer to look over. You know, like the Marvel guys do. You know, to, to like kind of give you an idea of a direction. That's do they? I got, I got an idea. That. I got an idea. Super John, let's bring in a kid. They have him and Lois have a kid. He, he's going to grow up to be uh, John, like the Superboy in the comics. I, I I think that'd be great. And he he has another understanding of life with his own kid now. And may, and I think with that you could have flashbacks to. Like a di- like I, I would uh, love like small uh, like Smallville type of pocket like flashbacks yeah. in yep. the movie like, where he's maybe t- teaching them like once you have your own kid you'll understand and stuff like that. I uh, uh, wh- why not have them have a kid now? I, I don't see why not. Well, I, guess, I mean, so- can we actually develop that relationship? But see, like I, I mean, if we're if we're <laughs> three movies in, right? I why not just have a kid? Because they've done nothing to. But I, that's I'm, I'm if we're so. Are we soft Ruby? Are we, is Henry Cavill out too? Because they've been well, out. I, mean, with, uh... I don't know how true. I, I mean, might be able to shed some more light on this. I've heard that the negotiations aren't going great. Okay. <laughs> with Tab. So, oh yeah, I've, I've, I've heard rumors about that um, too. I saw that. that yeah. it, that's an interesting topic because I've seen the conflicting reports, and uh, from what I'm to understand, just by going by what we've heard before, and the, the fact that nothing else has happened, is his original contract that he signed for is up so yeah. he's taking other jobs they want to keep him as superman because they think there's something there and he's been superman there are people out there that really like him but he wants a bigger share of the money on the other side sense. warner brothers isn't confident that if they give him let's say i i don't know what number he's gonna ask for maybe he's asking for 15 million they're afraid that if they get him for three movies they make one and then they find themselves in a garfield situation where they yeah. don't want to go they're going to owe that dude money, and the movie's budget might have to be scaled back, which I'm inclined to believe that's true, because 
they're clearly taking a step back to look at the DCEU as it is. I mean, just look at Batman. The cornerstone and the so, foundation of DC Comics, as we know it today, is based on Batman, and they're having a hard time bringing us a Batman. So like, what, what, what you're, what you're saying you know? is if they, if they give them the max, they're going to have to kind of lay back on the budget, right? That's almost yeah. in a way is a self fulfilling prophecy where this is what we would want if they give him the max and the budget's lower and they make a better movie that way. And Henry Cavill is like you see that he can be a great Superman. It's almost yeah, but you, it would you work run well. into that problem if you slash the budget. Oh, no, that's not even the right fucking words. If you <laughs> slash the budget back, mm-hmm. that's better. You know, you have to tone down the things that a movie needs. Like, you wouldn't be able to do a proper third act, and you'd need right. to have that third act fight because it's a Superman and movie if, and it's a Superman movie. So, and if they I don't... mean, look, who who knows how stuff goes? I'm trying to think of like a Marvel equivalent of a third act that wasn't that big, but I guess all the third acts were that big. I mean, I mean, if you want the smallest third act, it's probably Ant Man. No, but I'm not talking. Uh, I'm I talking about. Not, I'm not talking literal. I'm talking like budget wise. Well, no, yeah, that's what I was meaning. Like, you know, it's not exactly a massive. I mean, thing. Like, it's just very small. the first Thor movie, right? That uh, yeah, movie yeah, had the yeah. cheapest budget, and uh, literally that entire movie takes place in a little pop up town. That literally they built pop-up buildings. They're like, okay, we'll just make it look a little bigger, and it's cheap as hell. But it worked for the story because it established who he was. And I would personally be interested in something like that with Superman. Fine. It's a Smallville, right? Yeah. He, he's he's yeah. in Smallville the whole time. He's reconnecting with everybody else after uh, coming back alive and kind of going back to his roots. He's over here farming and stuff. He, you know, he's, he wants to marry Lois. I, he's I, trying I, to figure out why Chloe's in jail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And well, Lana what's the over there is there too. Uh, but uh, I, I try to think of like what kind of villain would work that or there. Um, I mean, Manchester Black comes to mind, and how he's kind of like brainwashing everybody in Smallville, and maybe he's trying to reconnect, and then people are pushing him away, and it has that immigrant effect, right? You're not one mm-hmm. of us. Why True. should we? Why, why should be we, we hang out with you, or why should we like you? You're not one of us. Um, look what you did here. Look what you did there. And it's Manchester Black could. I don't know. I'm just off the top of my yeah. head. I have no. This is kind of like a piece of the the recent uh, rebirth run where I think, except they turn into like big like squid aliens, but here it just could be brainwashing yeah. and like. What, I, if you, what if you use Shazam? Don't have a villain at all. Take the Ant Man and Wasp approach. Don't have a villain. Just use Shazam. Just what? Just have Shazam. What do you mean? Well, just bring. Like, have Shazam looking for Superman. Like, like there's hey, no like, actual he's villain he's in the this, movie. Yeah. He's, like he's oh, you mean one of those things? Spectacle. Oh, where there's like not a villain, but everybody has like a gray area. Like this day, yeah, like, like yeah. There, there's conflict between the characters. You can still do that, and well, I would not, say in a small maybe type. Even, like, maybe not even like quite like a conflict, but like have Shazam come in and put on this show trying to get his attention, and it's coming off so, like he's a villain. So Chad saying Cavill also wants to create a control. Well, Cavill is also a really big Superman fan, so if yeah. he. Want some creative control? I'm sure he wants to do more traditional Superman stories. Like, well, it's like they've teased. Also, it's like, oh, Black Adam might appear in there. What if it is a Black Adam shows up and he wants to fight Superman, and that's how you involve Shazam in it? He kind of comes yeah. to help. I'm like, I'd be cool I mean, with that. Another, like, Man you know? is still, it didn't. I remember there was a picture of The Rock, right, and mm-hmm. Cavill. The Rocky Cavill just hanging out, just yeah. like, hey, we have our handshakes. Like, so we're talking about like uh, DC stuff, and I, I wasn't. I don't know if that's the plan all along, but that's a lot of the rumors of what people wanted is that Black Adam versus Superman and Shazam would be kind of that through line. And once you have the Shazam movie, you can Man of Two could just be that uh, the animated movie. I kind I don't know. I'm leaning more now. I just want him to be in Smallville after just pitching it to myself. <laughs> I, I kind of just want like. The, I want that city to come more alive and like to know yep. more of the people. Yeah. And you know, and maybe he has flashbacks to Pa Ken and maybe it, it, it's more like Pa Ken being like I like the Pa Ken for Smallville. So, so uh, but I mean, a good yeah. thing here that was suggested, you know, let Cavill direct or no? Mm-hmm. No. 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 I don't know. No. I, look, give give him some creative control. Like yes. maybe he wants more traditional stories. Like direct direct is a whole different. Thing. like you know so there's a whole yeah. lot more to it i'm sure he'd probably do the work for it he would study up and he had to, he seems like that type of guy that if he gets a job he's gonna want to go in 100 percent. so it's i don't know i but it's still i don't know it's very iffy with actors turn directors especially mm-hmm. somebody who's not had a lot of acting true yeah 
Uh, who knows? Maybe on a... he's a better director than actor. Who knows? <laughs> you know, you don't give a first-time director a, a movie with a budget that you kind of a bit wary of. Yeah, right. So, exactly. Uh, I mean, I mean, no. look at uh, Josh Trank, right? With Fox. And I, I was, was going to say, look at Dark Phoenix. Okay. Or right that too. Yeah. I'm going to so tell you like... right now. They're going to abandon everything. They're going to get my boy Robert Rodriguez on this. Yes. He's going to do one take on everything, and it's going to be the greatest <laughs> grindhouse Superman movie you've ever seen. Like, you're going to see strings still hanging. It's he's going to have some He's gonna have some barbecue in it because Texas, because he's from San Antonio. Uh, he's going to have some little Mexican kid in there randomly. I remember there's a Mexican a kid episode in, um, in Smallville, and uh, Clark told his mom, if he's an illegal alien, aren't I an illegal alien? Like, <laughs> I thought... Did? That was the funniest part. Yeah, I need to rewatch all of them, man. <laughs> uh, so there we go. I guess that'll conclude it on our long extended Superman talk. Next up, we're going to be talking about the official 100% confirmation Disney Fox. They've agreed. Everything is a go between them. Now we just wait for a final approval to be, you know, yes, the government says yes, and everything is good to go. Um, X Men, Fantastic Four, Deadpool, all in the MCU. Now, I made a video talking about this, and people were like, yeah, he's right, because this is how it happens also um, with other properties that have crossed over uh, or changed hands between studios. Fox can now officially keep doing what they're doing, but Disney is allowed to already start planning how to introduce these characters. Like They're allowed to start looking for people to write potential scripts, because the two studios have agreed. So nothing's going to happen as soon as, like, Avengers 4, probably not, but you could feasibly see that next year they're already going to have uh, completed scripts and uh, ready to go once the government says yes. So it's quite a big you know, improvement over uh, what it was a couple months ago. So when do you think this is going to be done by? Because um, mm. what the countries that still need to approve it, is it the UK and like China? Uh, that's, that's apparently the big rumors that is those two but there's no confirmation because they don't want to talk about it so because you know yeah. why would governments want to say what they're doing that's true i'll you know. i'll go kick Theresa may in the ass or something <laughs> that way <laughs> but no it's because I, I the way they've been moving i can see it being done by the end of the year uh, but... so that's what i've personally been told is that's what they're pushing for like mm. like when we first heard the rumors um, for Disney possibly buying Fox, I remember I made a video saying what my source told me is they want it done before Christmas because they want to go into the next year with the um, numbers rising up. So when the fiscal quarter ends in March, they could be at an all-time high. I was told that same thing again with this. They're pushing to have it done by fiscal quarter, which means by March of 2019, they're hoping it's going to get done in. Disney's feasibly going to go, fine, if someone turns it down, what can we toss out that gets it done by then? Because shareholders for both companies are going to massively gain if it's done by the end of the fiscal quarter. So that's what they're pushing for, you know? Yeah, and it all lines up with uh, D23 next year. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, so they can announce whatever they uh, have planned. Mm. I mean, we know what they've got planned. They've got the Eternals movie coming out. There's only one reason why they probably want an Eternals movie, and that's because that's a direct link to put mutants in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, look, Celestials came down. They make Eternals. They make Deviants. Oh, look, this one guy called the Prober just made the X-Gene. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, the, the Prober wasn't a joke, by the way. Actually, she was called the Prober. <laughs> that I know. <laughs> <laughs> just like, ooh. Well, <laughs> It's, yeah. it's this thing where people are already, I've seen people speculating on what can happen. Just be real about this. Marvel is not suddenly going to just shift an entire movie to shoehorn in a lame Wolverine cameo into, no. like, Avengers no. 4. That would sacrifice no. the entire integrity of what they've been working for to, like, bend over backwards to these franchises that they didn't need to become the biggest franchise in the world. You're realistically going to get... A Wolverine movie, a Fantastic Four movie, and an X-Men movie, and they're going to alternate between three years. So that's really what you're going to get, you know? And it's like, is that bad? No, that's perfect. And you're probably getting the earliest one at 2022. So three and a half years away, that's not bad at all. So So that's that's before the end of Phase 4, so I'm fine. (laughs) Actually, what is the last Phase 4 date? Um, Is that technically... is, Is that... Hmm. Is it 2022 or is it 2023? I think so. 
Yeah. I mean, so will you do that Ant Man style where the last movies kick off to a new franchise? That kind of like Age of Ultron didn't yeah, end the last phase. It's like no, it ends with Ant Man. Yeah. It's like oh, even though I imagine Ant Man would probably end Phase Four as well. Yeah, <laughs> just to cap that trilogy up, but. True. And we don't yeah. even know if they're technically, because they've said we're not necessarily going to call them phases anymore, but th- they said that before they knew they were getting all these things. Now yeah. that they know they're probably and, and also, shuffling. <laughs> like, look at the DCEU. It's, it's not called the DCEU. No one gives a shit. It's called the DCEU. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't care what Feige calls it. It's Phase 4. And we all know it's going to have the Fantastic Four logo. Why would you not do that? Mm-hmm. Like. You, you put the anim- or the original Spider-Man music at the start of that movie, you're going to do something like that. Right. Yeah, it's um, it's one of these things where it's a long time coming, right? And as, as much as I want them here soon, that little, like, skeptical piece of me is like, oh, no, because I'm worried that, you know, it's the old age thing where we never would have gotten Guardians and Ant-Man if they would have owned some of these characters like Fantastic Four, because they could have gone cosmic with them. And guaranteed, we're getting Doctor Doom. Like, he's going to probably be an entire oh, yeah, phase yeah. villain, which is going to be yeah. absolutely mind-blowing, but it, it's only a matter of time before it happens. And realistically, people keep saying it's probably going to happen something in Avengers 4. Maybe, as a post credit scene, they'll mention something, but you won't see anything, because the post credit yeah. scene, they usually record them during the reshoots, which are only a couple months before release, so... Probably January, by the sound of it, when they're doing more reshoots for mm. Avengers Four. You know, it's it is. What so it is. I, but as a like a creator, would you actually want to put something like that at the end of that one? It's like, nope. oh, we've just finished the first this massive ten year storyline. Here's the next one. It's like let, let's breathe for a little bit, maybe. The, that maybe set up in the first film of Phase Four, not the. See, the only thing I would want, and this is honestly how I would do it. This is like my fanboy thinking uh, there's nothing else. I would save it for Spider-Man Far From Home. And the post credit scene, I would have Peter back in New York. And he goes, huh, looks up at the Stark building and has a four on it. And that's yeah. it. Like, that's yeah. what I would do. He, like, he just comes yeah, back like... you know, to New York. He's like, oh, what's changed while I was gone this entire summer? Looks up and it's like, who the hell are those guys? Like, okay. You know, you know, you know he just sees that and he goes, Baxter building, what's that? That's the thing. Would you have Baxter on it, or would you put a four on it? Because hmm. if you put the four on it, you've established that they're already there. But then you can, in the movie, you can go, well, it's, it's the start of it takes place before. T- set but it then... during the same time as Spider-Man's out of New York. Kind of explains why yeah. it's not there. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Or would you just slap Baxter on it and go, look, they do exist here. We, we'll get to it in a minute. I mean, they did it with Ant-Man. Why not? Honestly, why not? What the... Wait. Oh, what you mean, like the Hank Pym stuff? Yeah, Hank like the, Pym. Yeah. Was like, oh, yeah. he was in a freaking doing things in the '60s and '70s and '80s and even in the '90s. You're like, what? Oh, well, you didn't need to explain. Yeah. All right, cool. Like, maybe I'd be okay with I'd, it. I'd love to go back to that era, though. Oh, like, let, let me see Hank Pym, but same. I'm fine. With it. But um, going back to what you were saying about maybe not having like the smaller properties that people don't know about, like I don't know, like. I don't think they'd want to just ram X-Men and everything down your face. So, oh, we have X-Men back now. Here's five X-Men movies. I don't think they'd want to take that route. Because I think they like having their little smaller properties to make big and, you know, like an Eternals, you know. I, I, I still think that's coming whether they oh, get yeah. X-Men. Well, it, but it also, wouldn't that be kind of just like stuffing your face with dessert after you just had dinner? And you're just like, that might be a little bit too much. Like, you know, set up, maybe yeah. wait a little bit more, and then you yeah. can stuff your face. And it's like, you know, you, yes, they moved the entire Phase 3 slate around when they got the Spider-Man deal done. Yep. But, you know, they didn't really... They haven't. Yes, they, he's been in, like, every film since then. But it's not like his six Spider-Man films. Yeah. It's just like... Well, no, we're going to do the turn. We've got a Black Widow movie coming out. Like. Just looking at it realistically, there is no way Wolverine does not get a standalone movie. That is the oh, biggest no. mutant they own, and he totally is going to get a trilogy because it's goddamn Wolverine. Like that's that's a big name now, especially like how much X Men the movies currently have made them so prevalent. That gets its own thing. X Men gets its own things. Fantastic Four, Deadpool. They'll probably do something else. Um. X-Force will probably be its own thing on the side. Uh, I could realistically see them even like 
like gold mining some obscure thing and making that a franchise from that yeah. universe, you know? Alpha Flight, do oh, that. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, Captain Marvel yeah, could introduce could Alpha Flight. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. Introduce that whole universe with stuff you already have. Any, anyway. so like, you're in a good position. Was yeah. it? Yeah. It's, it's... Also, another thing for a Turner's movie, you can do Apocalypse, right? <laughs> you just have the, like Celestial Tech in Egypt. Done. Stop. Maybe. I can only get so hard. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh uh, man, it's gonna be so good in the coming years we're gonna learn more. I wish uh Marvel still did those I remember they did it once and they never did it again, but I still when they did that little Apple kind of showcase mm-hmm. in yeah, twenty fourteen. Do you wanna know why like, they haven't done it since? No, but so, uh we haven't finished the amount of movies that they announced then. Yeah. Uh, the- but also you heard I said no, right? <laughs> no, I didn't hear you say no. Uh, uh but uh no, nah, I always uh, I mean, loved that little showcase. I remember it specifically. I thought it was also fun for the people who were able to go. Yeah. I know there's some video uh, like from people from the audience. I think they even told you, take out your videos. You know, this is going to yeah. be on social media. Uh, so I I thought those. And then they brought out, I think, uh, Chadwick Boseman was And then he had a little fighting pose uh, with uh, Chris Evans Edwards, and Robert Downey yeah. Jr. I, you know, I, I thought that was a great thing. And whether they do it again after they finish the movies they announced I – mean, um, that'd be cool. Just to, to realistically think about it, they're probably going to announce that same thing, but it's going to be a D23 next year. Cause, yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to do their own panel D23. Yeah. And yeah. that's probably Sucks. when they're going to be like, hey, look, we wrapped up the phase. You guys just have Spider-Man right now. He's hitting worldwide. Let's tell you what we've been working on, which you probably know. Pop up the logos and then go, let us tell you the next five years. And that's when they pop up the four the X-Men, the Wolverine, what? you know, everything. And people are just like, that's going to be their big, you know, breakout moment again to set the stage for was, what's coming. Was D20 the first time we saw Infinity War footage? I mean, not no. us, per se. I, oh, I, no. I think um, we'll... Oh, was it? The, yeah, it was the was people that, there? I swear that it hurts. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so it was the Infinity War. I mean, D23 was the first time. I swear I remember it specifically that that happened. And in San Diego, there was more of it because it was more finished. And then, of course, like that. The kind of interesting thing that when you're looking at D23 and San Diego Comic Con, Disney's kind of been pulling back from San Diego more and more. But D23 next year is after San Diego Comic Con. It's end of August next year. It's not before SDCC. So realistically, I think they could go to San Diego. They're probably going to have a giant celebration of what's happened, and then they're going to hype up being like, "Hey guys." In a month, go to our show because that's where all the announcements are because that's when they're also planning on opening the giant Star Wars land and the Marvel reconstruction yep. they're doing. It just makes so much sense to do it because D23 is for Disney people, you know, Marvel people now. It's like it's their big stage. And by then, regardless of what happens, oh, the deal will be done. So it, make your big usually, announcement, you know. Yeah, and usually, usually uh, at D23, you can get tickets, but... If they're going to do it like this, you're probably not going to be able to get into the, the hall anymore. Yeah. You can, I mean, but you it, can it's usually a, just it, go there the day of and get a ticket. I, I think it's it, – it is still – you know, there's fan stuff, but it, it is majority press, isn't it, if I remember correctly? No, it's I, its own little con. Yeah, yeah, I, thought it was yeah, major- yeah, I thought it was majority yeah, press, and yeah, you could get no, tickets, but no, it's, like it's you know, like E3, fans. it's mostly the press people who end up in the halls, right? No, it's used, it's more for the fans. You can. Like, mm, I don't know too much about D23, so I'm asking a lot. Yeah, I mean it's it's, yeah. it's no different to Hall H and Comic Con. You know, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. get the yeah, press okay. people can yeah, just walk in, but the fans back. Yeah, yeah, D20, I don't, yeah. yeah, just saying D23 is more for the fans because you you it, was, it um it was like created in a way for people who were fans of Disney to get extra extra incentives for their uh, passing or being an annual member and such like that. Right. Cool. Uh, so. Yeah, um, that was our uh, Disney Acquires Fox talk. Uh, we finally did it, so you know, thanks, guys, for bugging <laughs> us all week to do it. Here it is. That, that was that. it. The future of DC Comics, specifically Green Lantern in film, because they said it's going to be a complete reinvention, and it can't be DC's Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh. Which is smart. <laughs> But like, you know, I, you I, I, that's such a movie. that's such a headliney grabby title. Like we're only putting mm-hmm. this for the headline t- stuff well, no, like that's that. exactly what he said. I know, but it's Don't just be like judging my headline. Yeah, yeah, I'm judging your headline. Um Ooh. but <laughs> he is John's is correct in a sense like 
they don't want to make it that. And I don't know what people think when they mean, is this the Guardians? Is, do they mean as in, like, a more comedy-centric type of stuff? Yeah, it's because it's always the goofy space thing. Like. Yeah, so, I mean, this was, I mean, they're all going to have quote-unquote comedy, but this is going to be a little bit more serious because how Jordan is a little bit more serious because so is Jon Stewart. The only isn't, funny one is Guy Gardner, but he's is not. Isn't, like, the movie supposed to be, like, a buddy cop film? But that's yeah. still, like, it's still good. They're going to be serious. I mean, it's not like Lethal Weapon was... Uh, they weren't serious, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's still gonna be they're they're gonna be serious characters, but they're gonna have funny moments. You say that the Guardians before the movie came out were serious characters. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, as as CJ said in our little hangout a couple of weeks back, like they use comedy to introduce his elements. So they, it's gonna uh, maybe that could be it here. Uh, it but kind of has to be similar. But I just it, think it doesn't. Got... I don't. I don't think like sure comedy can be a way to introduce stuff easy, but I doesn't mean that having it the way they were in the comics won't work, you know? So I, I'm not saying it would. I'm I, saying. I, I don't know. I just feel whenever I hear people throw around the term, this is basically Lethal Weapon, right? Every time I hear something about <laughs> this movie, and it's like, yeah, lethal if it's more like Lethal stuff. Weapon, that'd be great. They, It's a good movie, and there's funny moments in it, but they're not inherently funny characters. Like, they have, like, some jokes in here because, like, a buddy cop, but, you know, it, it could be one of those things where maybe how Jordan is the lighter one and, uh, John Stewart's kind of like the more serious because he's military. I mean, I guess technically how Jordan military too, but one, I guess, Marines and one Air Force. So I, I don't know. I think it's just going to be kind of what we know. I, like in the comics, I, I don't think they're going to stray too far. They're basically taking John's run. They're taking yeah, John's run for John's. everything. <laughs> Or when John's in charge, he just uses his own stuff anyway. So that's cool. I mean, I, I don't mind it. It's like he made a lot of great runs in comics. So why not use it? I mean, as long as it's not Doomsday Clock, then I'll be alright. I mean, I think that could work out as a great uh, movie. It's just that it just sucks that it happened to come out like two years apart, um, and <laughs> it got delayed so much. But yeah. or even his Avengers run, like ooh. I don't even. I didn't even know he had an Avengers run. Nineteen ninety eight. Man, I don't. Yeah, that's way back then. I, you, you'll probably know the and I probably never read it. No, like, you, you'll, you'll recognize a panel from his realm. This is like like a, my whole feeling with the whole Green Lantern and getting rebooted and stuff. So it's got to look different than the last one, which shouldn't be too yep, hard yep. considering the last one looked like a CG mess of things. And, but and they did go super hard on the comedy in the last one, which... Because they make got sense a comedic if, actor for it. Right. Yeah, yeah, which would make sense if they want to maybe go a little bit more uh, traditional here instead of just straight up comedy as opposed to the last mm-hmm. one. I think you kind of got to go. Don't use you know sinister or anything. Uh, yeah, That's yeah, really just, cool. just go. I don't know. Use red or I don't know orange. Anybody else, make a just... new, uh, make a new villain? Why not? Yeah, I mean, there, okay. I mean, to be fair. You, I, I say that, but there's so many Green Lantern villains, you don't have to make a new villain. It could be anybody. I mean, I think the first, the 2011 one was Sinestro and Parallax, right? If I yeah. remember correctly. So, Wasn't there like four villains in that movie, though? I, oh, yeah, the, the oh, Doctor. Amanda the, Waller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess technically we count her as a villain, but I was talking about the scientist guy. Oh, Hector Hammond? Hmm. Yeah, only I mean, Sinestro wasn't the villain, I guess, but he, he was at the at the, at the the end, so... I mean, who knows? You could have it be another, uh, like, lantern. It could be red, orange. It could be any one of those. Um, I think you need, like, at least another lantern in there. Yeah. You're, 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 you're going to have people done. like, oh, so they could only fight people who are other lanterns, huh? <laughs> I mean, you're going to get that anyway. Right. It's, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. exactly. literally a different color version I mean, of himself. Why don't you yeah. make it, like, one of those movies that, since they keep saying, oh, buddy cop, buddy cop, why don't you make it, like, okay... It's not something attacking Earth or something. Maybe yes. there's something in a sector of space that hasn't been touched in, you know, thousands of years. And they're like, we got to go yeah. investigate. We'll send our two best lanterns. And suddenly we're literally in, like, uncharted grounds of space. We're like, oh, man. So you can kind of pull off something hardcore. You know, throw a Lobo cameo in there. I don't care. Just make it entertaining. So, that's all I, I want. Mean, yeah. That's kind of what I, my initial thought of when they want to make this movie is that they just won't have it really on earth. They might have a little bit on earth just to kind of introduce stuff, but it's going to be primarily in space just cause you know, like, the, like I said, 2011 was all on earth basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, you say kind of like these two, they're in a sector of space and you know, it's a bad boys, a bad boyish, right. Where they're in this yep. place where they don't know what's happening and they have to survive. It's also very, uh, you know, any buddy cop movie or any kind of cop movie where there's just, 
these two people, they, they get into the situation and they're stuck and they have to get out of it. And it's like they have no help. It's only uh, them and their wits. And that could be fun. I, I mean, yeah, you could throw in love. Okay, I mean, you could do a lot of stuff uh, with the. You can. Um, I mean, it's DC Cosmic, right? They're doing a lot of stuff with DC Cosmic and Krypton. I'm excited for that. And I think with uh, Green Lantern, it's going to be um, even more because they're going to have the budget of a movie as mm-hmm. opposed to Krypton that doesn't have a big budget. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, so put Chip in there. Yeah, sure. Be, be smart. Be smart. You man. know, I, I, you can have Chip. You can have anybody, man. I, I'm 100 percent that. What's, I mean, I want the Red Lantern cat. Is it Dexter? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, have him in there as well. Just sure. do, the I mean, if you do the Red Lance, I mean... Yeah, just do Red Lance Core. Cool. Yeah. yeah, do Red. I just want to learn more, like... I know Johns is probably going to do it in it, but... Because they didn't really do it in the 2011 one, but learn more about the Guardians and the Green Lanterns in yeah. this movie as opposed to having to do homework and do read them in the comics. You know, I, I would like some of that in the movie just to see how it works in terms of live action. Um, but I would also like it if they, I don't know if they've changed this in the comics or not, but like Green Lantern's powers don't work just as he thinks of it and it happens. Like he has to he know like the yeah. compound of it also. So yeah. like what it's built out sure. of, it's fundamental building blocks. Like go into that because what I, if, you know, Green Lantern can't do it right because suddenly pressure's on him and, you know, things are going to hell. Like maybe he's struggling with it. There, that gives him a human nature. Like do that, there, you know? There's so many ways to that that they've uh, done over comics and how writers and artists have done it so differently. There's that way. There's sometimes where he doesn't even think about it. He just feels it. He just, mm-hmm. it just happens. Yeah. It's like a thing just, he has to like just give himself to like the body and stop overthinking stuff and just like fill it out. And then it stuff happens. Or, you know, there's the whole, like he just thinks of it randomly and it's just like, hey, 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 I thought of this. <laughs> um, but it, it just, I don't know. I, I think whatever way they play it, I think it'll be fine. In my opinion, uh, whether they play it like I he has to know the the weight of it and all that, kind of like he's super smart. Who knows? But I, I think that gives it another element to everything. It's sure. like, oh, I, I think of it and it, it can be here and anyone can do it. Like you have to actually know what you're making. Yeah. I, I kind of I've always liked the the feeling of the willpower. You have to like feel it. You you can't. You have to stop uh, overthinking it. I don't know. I've always I've always liked that aspect. I mean, it's that's a, still a part of it, but like just to. Sure to know all this other stuff like it's not that easy yeah. sure i mean because then anybody could be a green lantern right and yeah. i think they'll make it like that if let's say john stewart is the new uh green lantern in town he thinks he can do it just because he was in the marines and all that oh see that would be a great take also, on it. Also yeah remind, reminds me of full metal alchemist so i'm down for that anyway. i've I, like i've never seen that show so <laughs> i don't exactly know but that, 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 that's green lantern. Is amazing it is canon I, I, I think it's gonna be great, man. I, I, I'm looking forward to this. I think taking off John's run is gonna be uh, fun, and you know, I, I just think this is probably gonna happen like 2021, 22. It's gonna be a long time from now. But at least they'll get it done, hopefully. Sure. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's see these other movies get done first, right? Oh. And uh, hopefully this one can get it done. Yep. So uh, yeah, that ends our uh, Green Lantern. Our final topic here is Venom. The big old trailer hit. Uh, there's been a response online. There has mm-hmm. definitely been a response. Yep. yep. Um, I, I've seen both sides of the argument, and I can agree with both sides. What did you guys think of the Venom trailer? He looks great. Yup. Yes, looks good. Um, <laughs> it very quickly dissolved. It kind of becomes a meta commentary in itself. It's like, oh, it's a turd in the wind. It's like, yeah, yeah. you kind of look like a turd. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially the shot I use for the thumbnail. It's just like, what the fuck is even going on there? Dude. Uh, it's, so, it's, like, I said this when I kind like of gave fighting my... another... Oh, right, all right. Yeah, like, there's a couple symbiotes, and I said this when I gave my, like, the thoughts on it after him. My favorite part of the entire trailer was when he's, like, laying against the wall... And then, almost like the the old Darkness comic in the video game, the symbiote literally, like, manifests on the side of his head, and it's, like, yelling at him, like, this thing yeah. that's, like, about to eat him if he doesn't do what it does. I love that aspect, and I want more of that. Like, seeing the split and the pressure on him where he has to obey it because it's starting to take him over and lose control. But the things I didn't like about it was, like, at the point where the, the symbiotes are fighting each other, what in the world is happening? Like you pause it, you're looking at it, you're like, man, there's two floating CG heads up in a mess of black goo. I don't, I don't get it. Like, it's it's a mess. Trying to tear each other apart. 
Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, they did they did something similar to that. It just looks like cum fights, really, but <laughs> oh. I don't know. It's like it's not. Nice. It was cool to see like the difference. Like they're not just jumping straight into Kai. Just like, oh look, here's a little glimpse at screen. Yeah, they're like here's, here's Riot, and it's like Carnage isn't going to be this like straight off the bat. But apart from that, it's just like they've got some bits down. But I think I've seen them, this movie a thousand times. It's like, oh, government wants a weapon. People get weapon. Got to stop government from weapon. It's uh, it's kind of like I watch this trailer, and I already can tell you what the movie is. It's like, oh, he doesn't have a job. He used to be a reporter. He followed a story that turned out to be real, but nobody believes him because it's been swept under the rug. He leads, gets Venom, and they're like, oh, the thing has never bound to anybody else before successfully but him. He escapes. They chase him. They get his former wife. He has to go after her kind of redeems himself she dies he avenges you know whatever it's like the whole movie felt like it's in the trailer and there's nothing else you know that that was my complaint like i needed something more and no i'm not talking about spider-man i've accepted spider-man's not in this i'm just saying something felt missing in this and i don't know what it is well well well, to show up you 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 say it all though you said you said it all it's all it seems like the whole movie's in the trailer right that's why i didn't watch it and I'm kind of like out of this conversation because I didn't watch it. But here's the thing: it shows you virtually everything from the last trailer. Yeah, it's yeah, not really that effects. different. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, there was that one shot in the the first, I think it was the first teaser they released like six months ago. Like you see people falling over desks. Yep. And I was, was... like, oh yeah, there's going to be a symbiote there. What is it? There's riot there. It's like, <laughs> oh, I, I see now. I'm, and I gotta forget what you just said. I'm trying to forget the trailer. Well, it's like um, I mean, you don't, you don't. What's riot, Joe? I don't know. What's, well, there you what's go, then. You what's you see, I'm forgetting. Yet. Yes, I'm forgetting everything. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm just uh, like, I don't know. Also, well, the symbiotes go for your ass. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, she now i got to forget that too, man. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's like, wow. It, it was a very, I thought it was the best trailer they've put out so far. There's tons of symbiote action and stuff. It's great, but it felt very... Safe. Generic. To agree. Yeah, it's generic. That's probably the it's safe generic. I've seen this before, and I want this movie to be good. Like, you know, don't get me wrong. As much as I would love Venom, if I can't get him in the MCU, I'll take him like this, and I hope the movie's good. But there's still just that unknown factor, and it's because it's Sony behind it. That's what's mm-hmm. keeping my optimism at a very low level, because it's like, I just don't trust them. It... it they still haven't earned back my trust. Maybe this movie will be good and they'll earn it. I'll be like, all right, Morbius. I'm excited for this one, but I don't know yet. I just don't know. Oh, so who has the worst accent, Bane or Eddie Brock? Ooh. Ooh. Eddie like, Brock I, is... like, he, he sounds like an accent. I can't think who it is. He kind of goes like, I'm a reporter. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Eddie Brock, because Bane is like not an accent. It's just a voice modulation, isn't it? Not his Eddie Brock accent, No. No, he's no like, I mean, you said Bane, didn't you say Bane? Oh, Bane. Yeah, Bane's a modulation. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Like, yeah, Eddie Brock's like an actual accent. Yeah. And this is, Bane, Bane is just a modulation thing. God, I but mean, even his Venom, movie. it's so modulated to fuck, he can barely understand it. Yeah. It's like when he does the like, oh, his nose, his pancreas. It's like, what the fuck is he saying? I had to watch it three times to figure it out. Yeah. So <laughs> there was, There's a lot of um, kind of like that issue is very prevalent throughout the entire trailer. But... Then also, I guess the the humor is that what they were going for? Like, was that supposed to be? It funny? was something. I'm. I think that was supposed to be something. Yeah. But to be fair, in in their credit, Venom does have a dark, warp sense of humor. Oh yeah. So it's nice that they actually got that uh, across there. Yeah. Can we at least make it funny? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it, saying saying like people with no arms and no legs look like a turd in the wind is like. Eh. Uh, that's clearly, not the same dude that wrote that French fry three like tweet is yep, the dude yep. that wrote this. Like, there's yep. no difference between it. it's like no, you don't understand humor. Like, stop, stop doing this. You know, it's like we have to really explain like what the joke is as we're telling it. Mm-hmm. It's so, so funny. So. Yeah, I don't know. I hope it's fine. There is um, there's a lot of Easter eggs in that. Oh, are we done? <laughs> I mean, we can be. I uh, know. I just gotta go. Back. Got, I'm going in and out. No, no, no. I'm just going. I'm going in and out because I'm oh. trying not to listen to the spoilers. Okay, well, okay we can talk <laughs> about this then. Cause but uh, what, how yeah. about we'll leave spoilers and we'll talk about this. How I don't think we've talked about it anyway. Um, they still keep teasing very much so that somewhere down the road we're getting Spider-Man crossover with this. 
It ain't going to be the MCU Spider-Man, I can tell you that. So, who is it? Sure. Like, why? Just make, just make it Silk. Just give yeah. it to Silk. Like, don't put Spider-Man in it. Be different. You're trying to be different mm-hmm. anyway. Just use an unknown character. Done. <laughs> it's the exact same power set. Who, yeah. who cares? When does this movie come out again? September? Uh, uh, October. Yeah. I thought it was September for some reason. October. Let me check. Yeah. Okay, first, first week of first October. Week. Yep, first week, October 5th. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know. Venom has me cautiously somewhat optimistic, yet reluctant. I don't know how to explain it. I just, I don't trust Sony. That's really my big argument. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it doesn't look like it's going to be horrifically bad. It just looks like I've seen it before. Yeah. It's, it's fine. And that's what we can, I guess, really say about Venom. It looks yeah. like it'll be fine. The also, not having fine. lips and trying to say P's and other words. Yeah. Beginning with that <laughs> letters. It, it kind of is it's hard to like not think it's really badly dubbed. Yeah. It's just like, ooh. Well, also, the, yeah, there was the sync, like, the voice sync looked real weird. Yeah. Yeah. Just like paint for it. It's like you didn't actually make the P with your mouth. <laughs> it's okay. I kind of get I understand why. But then again, I think it's mainly weird because I've never thought of Venom as being able to move his mouth that much because the whole yeah. tongue thing. But I don't know. It's just it's just so weird. So weird. Hashtag bring back Topher's Grace. Oh no. <laughs> no. So I guess we're off the Venom talk, which is gonna bring us to the end of this show. Um Hopefully you guys enjoyed the topics we talked about. Uh, it's been a pretty decent show. As always, you guys, if you made it this far, you probably already know where to find us. But if you don't, just Google Comic Book Cast and go to the beginning of the show and find all our social media links. Or it's on the CBC Twitter as well, so you can follow us all there. Um, yep. Yep. So uh, that'll end the show for now. So thank you for joining us, everybody, and we'll catch you uh, next week.